Hey guys, it's Chris with Land Elevated, and I wanted to record a video about a 4.9 acre parcel that we recently acquired in Costilla County, Colorado. Uh, asking $7,499 for this property, and you can pay with cash or you could take advantage of our installment program uh, to do installments. It's kind of like bank financing, but with all, without all the headache. What we do is we have you pay to pay the down payment and processing fee. It's a one-time processing fee of one forty-nine. Uh, so the total you would pay is three forty-eight down, and then after that, thirty days later, you would make payments of one hundred and ninety-nine dollars a month. We are flexible on these payment plans. However, you want to do them, um, you can make more. Uh, you can make higher monthly payments if you'd like, and save on interest. Um, and or you can pay it off early if you decide to go that route there's no prepayment penalty uh, there's also no credit check and um, so it's it, we make it pretty easy there's no banks involved you don't have to go through a loan process it's it's a very quick and simple process if you ever want to learn more on how this works click on this link right here how do installments work it'll take you to a page where we've listed out all the information on how installments work so it goes through step by step uh, what's involved there um, all right so on to the property scroll down a little bit all the information on this property is below the images and the write-up um, you can see my contact information is here if you want to reach out to me and uh, we've got the street address subdivision city state zip um, most of the properties that we buy do not have a street address and that's very typical with raw land you get a street address when you typically when you apply for a building permit with the county and since this is raw land most of the properties that we buy and sell a permit's never been pulled um, but that is when you will actually register for a street address and uh, i believe you can get one without pulling a permit that's just when most people do it <clears throat> if you want to see where the property is or if you ever want a map to the property and go out and visit it you can take these GPS coordinates right here and you can plug them right into Google Maps and you can use the Google Map app on your phone or you could use Apple Maps or whatever mapping application that you have on your phone. You can also open up a new tab and go to maps.google.com and all you need to do is just copy these coordinates and paste them in here and it'll take you to the property I kinda like to look at it on satellite view rather than the map view just because it's more colorful and you get an idea of what the terrain looks like uh, before we do more of a property overview tour I'm going to take us back and just show you one cool feature that we added to our listings and it's the Google map link uh, you can actually click this link and it'll take you to that same spot that we just looked at automatically it'll show up in satellite view and you can go and tour around from there uh, one other final link just to show you here is the batch geo link batch geo is a really cool program it shows you the four corners of the property so we do that for you so you can see where this property really is located in relation to the road other roads and other properties so this is a rectangular property it goes right on along this road right here so it's got frontage along the road and then the property line just goes around in a rectangle <clears throat> okay so if we zoom out just a little bit we can look at where we are in the grand scheme of things here so to, for that I'm just gonna go to map view and we can take a look at a map of the US and you can see we're just in the southernmost part of Colorado in Costilla County um, we're about four hours from Denver, two and a half hours from Colorado Springs. Don't know how far we are from Pueblo, but we can map that. And uh, the town of Alamosa is probably the closest town that I would say you would want to go and stock up on supplies. They've got a grocery store there, and they've got uh, restaurants, banks, post office. They even have a small university there. So um, you're about 20 minutes from Al Alamosa, maybe 25. <clears throat> you also have Pagosa Springs over to the west, and I'm guessing it's about an hour away. Uh, and then you've got some some other good 
so Pagosa Springs has a river that you can go down in the summertime. Um, lots of fun activities in the summer. It also has skiing. You've got Taos to the south. Santa Fe, New Mexico is to the south. And if you go uh, even further, you've got Albuquerque. So zooming back in, uh, we will switch over to satellite view for a moment. And just for fun, we're going to zoom in on Alamosa. And you can see there's Adams State University. Zoom in a little bit further and we'll see some of the retail that's around there. They've got a, looks like a brewery down there, a Mexican restaurant, uh, a couple museums, and they've got some lodging there. They even have a golf course. And if we scroll back out, we can go take a look at uh, Blanca. So we're down to the south of Blanca and Blanca is a really small town. It's about 10 blocks and not a lot there, but they do have a post office and they've got a couple of little greasy spoons, it looks like. Um, so let's map this to a couple spots. I actually think I might have misquoted Alamosa by a few minutes. So let's just map it there and see what this looks like. All right, so to go over to Alamosa, it's actually a little bit further. It's 40 minutes. I uh, was looking at another property earlier that was 20 minutes. So 40 minutes to Alamosa. To go up to Denver, it is 4 hours, 13 minutes, and take a look at Colorado Springs. Okay, it's about 2 hours, 20 minutes there. And then we will check out Albuquerque. And it's about four hours from, from Albuquerque. So a little closer to Santa Fe. Uh, if we zoom in a little bit closer, we'll clear out these driving directions so we can see what's going on in the area. <clears throat> I'm going to zoom in and show you some of the peaks that are around. So, <clears throat> excuse me. All right, if we switch to an angle view here, you can see you got Route 159 going right by the property, and there's some awesome views of the mountain peaks that are around. We're going to zoom out because I don't remember the names of these mountain peaks, but we'll zoom back out and see what they're called. All right, there we go. So we're going around. So a lot of awesome open space around here. And you can do the same thing that I'm doing here if you want to open up Google Maps and take a look at it from an angle view. If you've got a <clears throat> if you've got a PC, you just hold down the control button while you're scrolling around with your mouse. Hit control and then drag the map around with your mouse. If you've got an Apple, you just hit the command button. And if we zoom back out, see what these peaks are called. There's Culebra Peak to the south, Trinchera Peak to the uh, east and then up to the north you got Blanc Peak and Mount Lindsay with a ton of outdoors activities to do here hiking uh, and fishing hunting pretty much an outdoor lover's dream so we'll jump back to the property listing page before we sign off here and uh, let's see here we'll just go over some of the details as to what you can and can't do on the property so uh, again there's the mapping links you can click those we provide the distances to all of these towns, so you can see how far it is to get to some of these areas. Um, and nearby landmarks, uh, I've got the parcel number here. Property taxes per year are 70 bucks, and the exact acreage of the property, 4.9 acres. It's rectangular. It's a level lot. It's 8,000 feet of elevation. 
Uh, as far as utilities, this is an off-grid property. So no electricity to the site, very common in these areas. Uh, what you would do for electricity is you would do a solar slash generator setup most likely. Um, for gas, you'd use propane. You'd get one of those large propane tanks. And for water, you could do two things. You could either install a well or you could install holding tanks and sign up for a water delivery service. Um, and then sewer would be by septic. I know in some areas they allow composting toilets. They may, that may be an option with a composting toilet, toilet and some sort of gray water system, uh, but I'm not sure. You'd have to check with the county on that one. Uh, one thing that's really nice about Costilla County is you can do, they, they're really flexible with their zoning and, and what you can and can't do. So, you know, our suggestions are, you know, for this property, you could build a home, you could use it as a short term camping site, keep it as a buy and hold investment, and or you could create a total off grid oasis, or just build a second home or cabin. Um, some of the common questions that we get a lot on these properties, we try to answer below. And if we just want to run through those real quick, um, one of the common questions that we get is, can you camp on the property? And the answer is yes, you can camp on the property for 14 days out of every 90 day period. And um, that's with tent camping. Next question that we get a lot is, can I use my RV on the property? And, you know, without, if it's just raw land, the answer is yes, you can use your RV on the property. You can stay, it's the same as tent camping, you can stay in the RV for up to 14 days out of 90. Uh, can't leave it there without you being around. I mean, you couldn't just leave it there uh, for weeks at a time with no one there. You could definitely take it down there, camp in it, and, you know, come and go as you please. But you couldn't just leave it there vacant for extended periods of time. One of the nice things that they do offer down there is longer term permits. So if you want to go down there and spend some time in the summer, you can apply for a longer term permit. Uh, the caveat is you do have to uh, install some sort of septic system. Like we mentioned above, it would be, it would be septic and uh, most likely or potentially something with a gray water solution and you would have a self-contained uh, toilet inside the RV or camper. Uh, water source you'd need as well and again it could be holding tanks um, or it could be a well and that's for that's only for longer term stays. Um, again back to what you can do, you can do a site built home as with most other residential areas in the US. Uh, you can do a mobile home, they're permitted there. You could do a tiny home if you'd like. It does have to be, it can't be too tiny, it's got to be bigger than 600 square feet. Modular homes are permitted manufactured homes are permitted and the last question that we get a lot is is the property located in a floodplain and it is not so here's another another way to actually look at the property too if you want to screw uh, scroll around on Google Earth you can either just do it right here right on the page or you could click this view larger map and it'll open it up for you so lots of options as far as finding where the property is located and seeing exactly where it is uh, if you do want to purchase this property, you can add it to cart. It's very much like an e-commerce site. You can add it to the cart, you fill out your contact information, add your credit card, and you would process $348 today. And then we'd sign the land contract, uh, which is a standard real estate contract, and 30 days later, your monthly payments of $199 would start. So it's a very simple process. We try to make it as easy and frictionless as possible. Uh, you could do the whole thing in under 10 minutes and become a landowner. If you have any questions, please call me, Chris Clark with Land Elevated. My contact information is right here, phone number 720-213-8233, or email me at chris at landelevated.com. Thanks for watching.